The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy, 2018. So what we're going to do is something that I never did before, but I think it might be a good idea to perhaps start doing this. Great books, powerful books that are very influential and that can make a very profound difference in your life, in your vision or your progressive realization to success, need to be revisited regularly. Books like Think and Grow Rich, books like Power of the Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy, and various other business books and personal development books. When you read them the first time, what you get is a base level understanding about yourself, how you see reality, and some ideas and philosophies that you can integrate to create results in your life. When you go and take action on that information, and then you come back to the book, it's like you're reading a whole new book. New information tends to stand out and has different kinds of meaning, and different action items are generated from this. And as a result, you are able to take it and apply it and produce further results. Now, this is going to be especially true when you're dealing with any kind of material related to the subconscious mind. So thus, it's important for me to revisit the original mind map that I created in the original video that I did on the power of the subconscious mind and reflect now upon quite a bit of time that's passed since then where I worked with my consulting clients, coaching clients, worked on myself and discussed this stuff deeply and reflected upon deeply and actually was one of the inspirations for my subconscious mind training program. And depending on when you're watching this video, it could be at beta or the final version. Link is in the description on my training site if you want to participate in that. So revisiting this book is very important because now that I have a more elevated perspective and a deeper understanding on the power of how all this stuff works and evolving myself and evolving my clients and so forth as a result of working with the information that I learned from Power of the Subconscious Mind, I believe I can add more depth and dimension and understanding to your journey as you continue to reprogram your subconscious mind towards success. So again, let's start with the definition, conscious mind. Your conscious mind is the watchman at the gate. Its chief function is to protect your subconscious from false impressions. So one of the things that I've done since I started working with this, and this was back in the days when I came across this information and really started to work on it with extra focus over the last few years, is I became even more aware of the kind of information that I'm consuming. And I realized that there is empowering information and then there's disempowering information. There's information that's moving me towards my goals and information that is seemingly moving me away from my goals. Now, when I say seeming me, seemingly of moving away from my goals, it is the meaning that I'm giving to it that is either an empowering or disempowering meaning that makes me feel like it's moving me away from my goals. For example, in business, rejection is one of the things that we experience when we're selling, when we're doing deals, when we're connecting with people. Now, most of us have been taught to experience rejection from a place of disempowerment. Okay, if somebody rejects you, you get laughed at, you're not accepted. It means all these negative things, all these disempowering thoughts come up. And these emotions that you experience as a result of having those thoughts tend to orient you towards not producing the results that you want or having fear from ever taking action again or making it very difficult for you to go out and take action. So empowering meanings that I've created around rejection is that rejection is actually giving me optimization data. Rejection is me moving towards a outcome that I would like that is me taking action with faith. And as a result of the faith, there's a response I'm getting from the environment. And the response is revealing to me many different insights and perspectives on how I can optimize what I'm doing. So in other words, the more rejection I face, the better I am at understanding, the better, more deeper my learnings and my experiences are. And with that information that I gather from the rejection, notes, pages and pages of notes, insights, perspectives, I can go and seek counsel. I could educate myself and learn more information. And I could study those that were in similar situations and how they overcame it. And then I can readjust everything that I do so that when I go into position again, where I'm in front of a prospect, the likelihood of success increases. So this is a more educated, more empowering way of looking at reality. 
is taking every meaning that you are giving to something, really evaluating all your experiences in life, and you get better at this with practice, and asking yourself, why are we giving it a disempowering meaning if we are giving it? And how can we give it a empowering meaning and look for certain kinds of reference experiences? We're not talking about delusion here, where those that were able to be in a situation like that were able to overcome it and even create bodies of work to help us overcome it or look to past experiences where we had where a similar situation resulted in a positive outcome and reflect on that and know why. And thus what will happen is that will program our subconscious mind towards empowerment, movement, or automatic behaviors that will result in success. That is the function of the watchman at the gate. Watchman at the gate is to be aware of the kind of information you're consuming, whether it be experiences in life, music, books, people you're listening to, everything in your environment, and then choosing the kind of meaning you're taking in, being aware of the kind of meaning you're taking in. In earlier stages of life, when we're growing up, we don't understand how this stuff works, and we just assume the meaning that others tell us to assume, or if we have a negative experience, we assume negative meaning. This meaning goes into our subconscious mind and programs us to live from that perspective. And then we replay many scenarios in our life over and over again that are built on that foundation of the disempowering meaning. You have the power to choose. Choose health and happiness. You can choose to be friendly or you can choose to be unfriendly. Choose to be cooperative, joyous, friendly, lovable, and the whole world will respond. This is the best way to develop a wonderful personality. Your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. You can tell a lot about a person if you ask them if the universe, if they think the universe and the world is a friendly place. If they believe that the world is a friendly place, they tend to have more success. They tend to navigate the world with ease. They tend to be more pleasant, joyous. As a result of that, they attract a lot of abundance and opportunity in their life. Those that see the world as a negative place, as an evil place, subconsciously will go out and look for negative experiences and situations and information to validate that. It's a form of confirmation bias. It's a very important concept to learn, confirmation bias. Now, it's important to be aware that there's things going on in the world and how we choose to identify with what is going on in the world is going to be determined, determining the kind of success that we get and how we move towards our vision and our goals. So we can take information and see it for what it is and we can study it, we can understand the perspective of the other person and the circumstance and the environment and then we can choose to not have it control us in a disempowering way, a way that after consuming the information, we feel that we are at the effect of the world. When working with the subconscious mind, we want to put ourselves in the cause. And the conscious mind is just that. It's the rational mind, the part that's thinking, the part that's always evaluating everything in the environment and choosing what to assume as fact. You have an ability to apply some critical thinking and look at the various scopes of possibilities and different kinds of meanings that could be applied to different scenarios and consciously pick the one that is the most empowering and beneficial for you and others. You are like a captain navigating a ship. He must give the right orders and likewise, you must give the right orders, thoughts and images to your subconscious mind, which controls and governs all your experiences. So your subconscious mind has predominant control of your reality. Most of who you are is subconscious. The conscious mind is working and thinking and rationalizing and trying to make sense of things, but the behaviors are mostly subconscious. This is why you'll find somebody that wants to create success in business, for example, they consciously want to, and they might even appear to consciously think and talk about and maybe do some things that are moving them forward towards business results. But however, subconsciously, they have ill programming or negative programming surrounding money and business and productivity and sales and marketing and all the important elements regarding business, they're more likely to feel rejection and fear and frustration and so forth and give into it because subconsciously it's a manifestation of their deeply rooted self-image. See, we have within ourselves a self-image. If we believe ourselves to be successful, if we believe that we're worthy of success, worthy of love, worthy of trust, and worthy of respect, we're going to manifest the behavior subconsciously from that place to create the results that reflect that in the outer world. As mentioned, your inner world is a reflection of your outer world. Your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. It's important to evaluate and understand that what you do is focus on changing yourself within. If you change yourself within, the environment changes. You might decide that you don't want to be in certain situations that you were once entertaining before. You might choose different kinds of friends, different kinds of experiences, and so forth that are now aligned with the conscious 
efforts that you have been putting in to program your subconscious mind that now navigates reality from this empowering perspective. Whatever your conscious mind assumes and believes to be true, your subconscious mind and all and all the blessings of life, mind will accept and bring this to pass. Believe in good fortune, divine guidance, and right action. Believe in good fortune, divine guidance, and right action. Just the thought of that is very empowering. When you believe this through affirmations and repetitions, this is the different kinds of things that I cover in the program that I'm working on, what happens is you begin to believe that good fortune and divine guidance and right action is yours. And then you start to navigate reality from that perspective. If you believe that the world is an evil place and there's a lot of negativity and the odds are not in your favor, you will navigate from that perspective. You will even look for supporting information. You'll even associate with certain people and experiences to bring about, like theater, those experiences that validate your deep subconscious thinking. Your subconscious mind controls all vital processes of your body and knows the answer to all problems. There's a lot of who we are that is controlled and governed by the subconscious mind. If someone tries to explain themselves, if they're you know pretty aware of who they are, they might do a really good job in identifying their values and beliefs and how they see reality to work. And even then, they'll just be scratching the surface because most of who they are is subconscious. And the subconscious mind is a net result of various experiences that we've had in our lives, various stories we've been told about how reality works, stories we tell ourselves, values and beliefs that we have, certain kind of skills that we've been working to cultivate, certain kinds of capabilities and behaviors, certain kinds of interpretations of the environment, different kinds of environments that we were in. And we've been alive for many years, some of us 30, 40, 50, 60 years, constantly, all the time, accumulating data, accumulating meaning for different things that happen in our life. So there's tons of information within us, and all this information has programmed our subconscious mind to move towards a direction of the reality that we now live. Those that cultivate their mind in an environment of empowerment, where they surround themselves with people that are in alignment with their goal, with environments that are in alignment with their goal, with information that's in alignment with their goal, is more likely going to produce success because all that information is programming their subconscious mind to reflect the environment, the people, and the circumstances that are experiencing or that are the net result of the success. This is why it's so important to recognize that most of what we are, most of who we are, is subconscious, and we need to make sure that we're very conscious and aware on the kind of information that we are consuming. You might think that, okay, you are going to participate in some event, and it's entertaining, and it's fun, and it's okay that there's all this disempowering information and disempowering people and circumstances in there. However, that information is going into your subconscious mind and programming it. And it's probably programming it to a higher degree because you are relaxed in that environment. And one of the ways to program our subconscious mind is to relax and believe. This is why hypnosis works really well. This is why auto-suggestion, as talked about in Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, works really well because you do it from a place of relaxation. You allow the information to go in and you visualize and you emotionalize that information to be as fact. Now, when you're in an entertaining environment, you're doing all these fun things and there's disempowering information there, you're also taking in, in that information. You, never know, you ever notice how if you've gone to certain kind of environments and you repeatedly go to those environments, you'll find yourself behaving like the people in those environments. You'll find yourself using the same phraseology. And by the way, the words that you use and how you communicate to yourself is equally as important because it reveals to you what is in your subconscious mind and how you believe reality to work. And it's also affirming that reality, whether it be positive or negative. And I did a very lengthy discussion on the book, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. I recommend you watch it. I'll put a link in the description. Think good and good falls. Think evil and evil falls. You are what you think all day long. So we need to be really aware of what we are thinking, what we are saying to others, how we are communicating and navigating the external world, how we are interacting with the environment, and how we are responding with words or thoughts and feelings based on the environment. All this is A, a revelation of our subconscious mind and giving us data as to what we need to do to orient our subconscious mind to take in programming that's related to our vision. So you want to take programming into your subconscious mind that is related to the vision, the life you want to create. All of us have to have goals in our lives, and most of us do. 
whether it's small goals or big goals, it doesn't really matter. We need to have goals, and the goals have to elevate us, has to improve multiple areas of our lives and make our lives better. And then this ability to create goals and move towards the goals and recognize a higher version of yourself that you aspire to be is going to switch the environment into a perspective of how everything is giving you data about yourself, whether you are remaining there, moving backwards, or moving forward. And you can take this information and you can note it and you can journal it. And from there, you can identify certain kinds of disempowering beliefs and values and experiences that you have. And you can reprogram your subconscious mind with affirmations and supporting yourself with information and people and environments that facilitate the good behaviors related to the affirmations. And then what you'll start to notice is that your subconscious mind will be programmed to be like that. And I know this to be true based on personal experience. I've been an entrepreneur now full time for almost 10 years. And my way of looking at reality and how I navigate reality, my belief systems, my ideologies have changed drastically since I started drastically. And this is because of the information that I was consuming, the actions I've been taking, the environments that I've been in, the people that I've surrounded myself with, and the various kinds of support systems that I have intentfully put in my life to cultivate the various capabilities and behaviors to influence my environment towards success of entrepreneurship. And this has been a gradual process. However, over the last year, especially with working with my coaching clients and my consulting clients, which I really amped up over the last year because I'm fascinated about these things and working on the subconscious mind training program, I really put a lot of emphasis on programming my subconscious mind even more. And I can report to you that every single day my perspectives are evolving. I'm able to identify things in my environment that I'm giving disempowering meaning to real time, I'm able to change the meaning over to an empowering meaning, and really look for supporting evidence of that empowering meaning. So I'm not just believing something based on delusion. And the repetition of that and putting systems and different kinds of things in place to support that information is radically transforming, okay, I mean, radically transforming my subconscious mind to a higher level. So I can honestly vouch for this information even more so than ever before. And that's another reason why I wanted to make this updated video to share with you the progress. Whether the object of your faith is real or false, you will get results. Your subconscious mind responds to the thought in your mind. Look upon faith as a good thought in your mind and it will suffice. The infinite intelligence within your subconscious mind can reveal to you everything you need to know at every moment of time and point of space, provided you are open-minded and receptive. So this is something that I've also been working with. What I've been noting, noticing within myself is as I've been adopting and incorporating empowering thoughts, philosophies, ideologies, communication, environments, etc., that are in alignment with my vision, I'm getting a ton of insights, hunches, inspirations, and so forth. And anyone that's ever achieved notable success in life will tell you that they have been inspired from within. They got an idea from within. They have no idea where it came from. I realize that by doing the things that I'm sharing with you in this video right here and what's covered in the book, you can multiply this. You get even more insights and perspectives. You get even more understandings. And I speak from experience and from working with those that I've been sharing this information with adjusted the way that I've come to understand it from my research, they're noticing the same thing. Now, the power of this is they're learning to trust themselves. I'm learning to trust myself even more. I'm learning to listen to myself. I'm learning to understand myself even more. One of the greatest things that you can learn in life is about yourself, learning yourself. Having an awareness of yourself is one of the most important things that you can dedicate your life to doing because it's you that's creating your reality. And when we don't operate from this perspective, we put too much emphasis on the external world. It's you that responds to the external world. It's you that gives meaning to the external world. And if you give too much meaning to the external world, you become very reactive. You lose yourself. Okay, notice when you are in a place of empowerment and you are intentional versus when you are reactive and you're just responding to the environment and allowing it to steer you in whatever direction that the environment is taking you to, which, by the way, is also programming your subconscious mind. Now, I did a lengthy discussion on the autobiography of the yogi, and his main concept is self-realization. And there's a reason why Steve Jobs listened to the audio of Autobiography of the Yogi and kept reading Autobiography of the Yogi 
for over and over again till he died because he realized the importance of going within to tap into this infinite intelligence and really working with the subconscious mind. And if Steve Jobs shared the autobiography of the yogi as a gift to everybody that attended, you know, when he passed away, he did a big reception, he had planned everything as the gift that he gave to everyone, then there's probably good reason for it. And I believe the reason is that when we work with our subconscious mind, we tap into creative sources of inspiration and we learn to trust ourselves. If you want to create success in life, you have to be able to trust, love, and respect yourself. Now let's talk about programming the subconscious mind. Whether you impress on your subconscious, whatever you impress on your subconscious mind is expressed on the screen of space and thoughts entertained in your conscious mind as conditions, experiences, and events. Therefore, you should carefully watch all ideas. So observe your thoughts, observe your self-thought, observe the experiences that you have, experience that you interpret about your reality. Right now, you're in an environment, and wherever you go, there's an environment. It could be your office, it could be the people that you're talking to, it could be sitting in front of the computer right now. There's environments. And these environments are telling you about yourself. And the meaning that you give to different aspects of your environment is revealing to you about yourself. If you're angry about something in the external world, there's probably anger within yourself. A good book to read is Power Versus Force and also Letting Go by David Hawkins. I did discussions on that. I'll put links in the description. And the goal is to raise our level of consciousness. The higher the level of consciousness, the more we understand this concept of the external world being a reflection of our inner world. And the more we tend to operate from a place of unconditional love, peace, and acceptance of others and understanding their perspective. As Stephen R. Covey puts in Seven Habits, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Change your thoughts and change your destiny. You become what you think about. Your thoughts govern your emotions and your emotions drive you into action. We make decisions. Anyone who's in sales know this. Most buying decisions are made on emotions. Okay? Some people can logically you know, track everything down, but a lot of people, a lot of us are still motivated, arguably almost all of us or every one of us is motivated by emotions. We wanna feel a certain way when we make that buying decision. Those emotions are governed by thoughts. The thoughts drive the emotions. So when you understand your thoughts, what you're thinking, and you really make a study of yourself, you change your destiny. There are people that will make frivolous purchases as a result of their thoughts, driven by their emotions as a result of their thoughts. And there are those that will make conscious decisions, purchase decisions that are fulfilling and also uh, nurturing, inspiring, uplifting, and have more of a long-term positive effect because of their thoughts. If you operate from a place of abundance, your thoughts are going to be of abundance and your emotions will be of abundance and you'll transact reality from that place. If you do things from a place of scarcity, you might make scarcity-based decisions and you'll play out scarcity. So those that have scarcity way of looking at reality actually attract scarcity in their lives because they're acting out scarcity behaviors and gestures and ways of being. You can notice somebody when you interact with them if they come from a place of abundance. You'll notice their words, their gestures, their energy, and usually those people have abundance in their lives. Or you can see somebody that's scarcity. They have very dark energy. They kind of have like a, a negative look to them. That's a revelation of the thoughts that they're holding in your mind. And those thoughts come from experiences, whether it was within their control or not, from their subconscious or that have programmed their subconscious. Watch what you say. You have to account for every idle word. Never say, I will fail, I will lose my job, I can't pay rent. Your subconscious mind can't take a joke. It brings these things to pass. Your subconscious mind does not know the difference between truth and false. It just accepts everything the way it is. So when you say something like, I can't pay rent, or my life is stressful, or money is the root of all evil, you are affirming this into your subconscious mind and you are navigating reality, it's generating emotions, and it's bringing about experiences because you draw upon those experiences by navigating reality. If you believe negative thoughts, remember most of our programming is subconscious, you might not even realize how you contributed towards the end result of failure, but if you go back and you track it, and this is why I love As a Man Think It by James Allen, every thought or every action or every circumstance can be related and tracked back to each other. If you make a conscious effort of doing this, you can discover how this is true. So when you create a negative outcome in your life that results in failure as a result of lack of abundance thinking or not seeing things from a perspective of 
that you can produce the result, you can trace it back to a negative thought that you had. And understand this, you oriented yourself as you navigated in reality subconsciously towards that result, which was not in your favor. So you can gain control of your mind and you can orient yourself towards producing results. There are people that look at a circumstance and see it as an obstacle and it holds them back and causes them to quit. Or they can be another person who sees that same circumstance from a place of opportunity. They see it as an opportunity. They see it as fun puzzles to be solved. They're more likely to get success because they believe reality to work that way. Keep your conscious mind busy with the expectation of the best and your subconscious will faithfully reproduce the habitual thinking. Never say I can't overcome the fear by substituting the following. I can do all things through the power of my own subconscious mind. Affirmations are very important. One of the things that I recommend in my program and I have a whole process is creating these affirmation audio programs or audio messages and there's a certain formula for doing it so that what it's doing is it's programming your subconscious mind to attract abundance and to respect others as you would respect yourself or respect your environment as you would respect yourself. And as a result, you navigate to achieve the results that you want with joy, with bliss, with ease, and with mutual win-win cooperation. It's important to be very clear and specific towards a win-win and empowering outcome for yourself and others when programming your subconscious mind because you will behave from that perspective. If you're thinking, I just want to make $100,000 a year or $200,000 a year, and you don't really care about the implications of how you make it, your subconscious mind, if you believe it, if you do the repetitions, you'll create it. But you might create it with a whole bunch of negative outcomes. You might end up hurting a lot of people. You might end up destroying your friendships and relationships and so forth. So it's important to be as clear as possible when you are focusing on your affirmation to program your subconscious mind because this stuff's really powerful. It works because it's designed to get you to automatically do things. Your subconscious mind generates automatic behaviors. Your subconscious mind has the answer to all problems. You suggest your subconscious mind prior to sleep. I want to wake up at 6 a.m. It will awaken you at the exact time. And you have to do it with faith. So you can't just say it passively. You've got to visualize it and emotionalize it. And you've got to develop what Napoleon Hill calls the burning desire. It's that emotionalization that imprints that idea, the concept into your subconscious mind, and that moves you into action. So as I was building my business in the starting days, when I was like super, super intense and driven, I was so, so passionate about creating the business success that I would literally wake up at five o'clock in the morning without an alarm clock, just jump out of bed. I was so excited to do it. That was impressing upon my subconscious mind the importance of doing things in an organized fashion and creating routines that my subconscious mind reinforced. So I would automatically wake up. Now, I'm sure you can notice this about certain things in your life. Think about past situations in your life where you were so passionate or you were so adamant about something and you just found yourself automatically doing that thing, perhaps even waking up. Maybe you were so excited about going on a trip, on a vacation, you didn't even use the alarm clock to wake up. Your subconscious mind woke you up at like five o'clock in the morning and you set the alarm for like 5.15 or 5.30, but you got out of bed because you were so excited. That's an example of programming the subconscious mind right there. Although it might not be as intentful as an affirmation, it tends to work the same way. If you want to write a book, write a wonderful play, give a better talk to your audience, convey an idea lovingly and feelingly to your subconscious mind and will respond accordingly. So one of the things that I get asked a lot in this channel is how did I improve my communication skills? How did I become more eloquent in my communication, my ability to choose words, keep everything on sequence? Well, I surround myself with information and different kinds of audios and trainings and environments that facilitate myself to be like this. See, if you have a lot of clutter and distortion and stress in your environment, you'll start to communicate from that perspective because all that's going into your subconscious mind. If you guard your mind and you surround yourself with clarity, with purpose, with vision, with passion, with joy, and the things that inspire and uplift you, you're going to communicate from that perspective. You'll notice this. Those that tend to follow certain people or will communicate like others in their work or learn or be in environments where somebody sounds a certain way and they talk a certain way will usually tend to communicate like them. And if it's an environment, there's a lot of stress and frustration and anger and so forth. You're going to communicate like that as well. Subconsciously, you're programming yourself to communicate that way. You're taking in that energy 
And you'll communicate like that with your spouse, your friends, your family, your children, and so forth. So cultivating an environment within where you are calm, where you are focused, and doing the things that actually we talk about in Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. I'll put a link in the description. Setting yourself up for an environment that cultivates flow allows you to act as if you're in flow more often because you are in flow. It will communicate your ideas effectively as if in flow and conversations will flow out of you because there's a lot of little pieces that go on when it comes to programming your subconscious mind. And we don't necessarily want to consciously think about all these things, but we do have to remember that our environment stimulates us to be a certain way and has a huge impact on how we perform. So by being in certain environments that automatically get you to communicate a certain way, it'll bring it out within you without having you trying. Because if you try, then it's not going to come out as smooth and as eloquent. Never use terms like, I can't afford, I can't do this. Imagine the happy ending or solution to your problem. Feel the thrill of the accomplishment and what you imagine and feel will be accepted by your subconscious mind and bring it to pass. So imagine the happy ending or solution to your problem. Imagine if you've got a desire to build a business, look at the solution and the end result, the vision you want to create, create a vision board, do the affirmations, really get passionate about how you're going to be, how you're going to feel when you create that end result, and you'll find yourself solving problems. If you focus on the negativity of a problem, you will lose sight of your vision and your subconscious mind will bring about more problems related to that problem. This is why those, I can always tell when somebody loses touch of their vision because they're so caught up in the details and stress of the day to day and all of a sudden they end up in this kind of rat race type of deal on a hamster wheel and they're pushing and they're pushing and they're pushing because the pushing energy is being imprinted in the subconscious mind and results in more pushing from the environment and they're constantly on this grind. So when we look at our vision and it's a vision that we want to create that's one of joy, happiness, prosperity, abundance, and happiness, and we focus on that and we keep our focus on that as much as possible, the things that we're doing in our environment tend to flow with ease because the subconscious mind is orienting you towards vision you might actually find yourself not doing a lot of those things. And this is common in the business world. I see those that create businesses very joyously, with ease, efficiently, and produce the results, and those that do it from a very stressful way. The ones that do it from the very stressful way, and they don't even end up producing the results because all they're focusing on is how hard it is, are constantly replaying how hard it is over and over again as a manifestation of their subconscious mind. Remind yourself the healing power of your subconscious mind. You can reduce stress in your life. You could feel better. You can start to nourish yourself. And this can translate to a lot of positivity in your health and well-being. By focusing on well-being, develop a definite plan for turning over your requests or desires to your subconscious mind. Imagine the end, of the end desired result and feel its reality. Follow it through and you'll get definite results. The important thing is when you've got a vision and when you're doing the affirmations that you imagine you visualize, you emotionalize, and you get more and more excited with each affirmation, with each repetition of the affirmation. This goes in and programs your subconscious mind in a positive way, just like how everything in your life that where you experience strong emotions was programming your subconscious mind, whether it be in a positive or negative way. Feel the joy and restfulness in foreseeing the certain accomplishments of your desire. Any mental picture which you have in your mind is the substance for things hoped for and evidence to uh, evidence of things not seen. A mental picture is worth a thousand words. Your subconscious mind will bring to pass the picture held in your mind backed by faith. Backed by faith. So how do you cultivate faith? Well, you have the mental picture in your mind. You get excited and you get very emotional with it and you get more and more excited. And then you're going to find yourself acting in faith automatically. You're going to be communicating in a certain way. You're going to be focused on certain things. You're going to be doing things. And that's why it's important to listen to this audio over and over and over again. Because what I'm really infusing in this audio is the elements of programming your subconscious mind, but infused with the fact that I live it. I do these things. My client do these things. So there is congruence in this audio. And your subconscious mind will feel my congruence, will feel my faith, and the information will be more powerful. And you'll find yourself automatically doing these things that we talk about. Now, I've been studying transformational training and how to create breakthroughs in people because 
it's something that has always been fascinated and I'm, I've gotten very good at it. I'm able to change people's perspectives on reality to one of empowering like really fast. And the way to do it is by living the philosophy, okay, living the philosophy. And then from there, communicating the joy and excitement of the philosophy and sharing with, with you and others, it is a demonstration and infused with faith. And that faith is received by your subconscious mind along with the information, just like when you listen to music and there's a lot of passion in it, but there might be negative lyric, lyrics in it. It's going into your subconscious mind. Think of this as more of a positive. So mental coercion is too much effort and shows anxiety and fear. We mentioned this and will block your answer. Easy does it. So I mentioned that when we are focused on our vision, we're very passionate and then ideas and inspirations will flow and we'll start doing things different. We might stop doing some of these things that are very stressful. But if you focus on the day-to-day -day and the stress and the grind and the repetition, like a lot of people do, all it does is it creates more fear and anxiety. You can see people are like this. They're constantly caught up in doing the same thing over and over again. They don't even know why they're doing it. They forgot about the vision. They forgot about their dreams. And if, they, if this goes on long enough, what's going to happen is that they'll totally disregard ever having visions and dreams and they'll just be very repetitive doing the same thing and it will show on their face. You can see the stress. They don't have the passion. When someone is a lot younger at the age of like 19, 20, 21, they got a lot of passion for the world. Napoleon Hill, not only Napoleon Hill, think and grow rich in, not think and grow rich, Earl Nightingale talks about this in The Stranger's Secret. Those that set out at the age of 25 have all these hopes and dreams. Only a few of them will make it. What has happened to them? And he says goals. He said goals. Those that have goals, those that have a vision, have passion towards vision and focus on the vision, and the things start to play out accordingly. They don't get caught up in the details, the day-to-day. -day. They don't believe that after you get to a certain point, you've got to follow a repetitive life. That's not how I live. That's not how anyone I know who achieves results lives. Those that achieve results keep raising the bar and focus on their vision and orient everything that they do towards a vision. They don't get caught up in the details. So we get relaxed, we get passionate, and we relax when we enjoy our vision, when we focus on our vision. And then we start orienting ourselves because the subconscious mind then comes in and does the work after that. Think and plan independently of traditional methods. So if a lot of people are living from this place where they get caught up in details and they grind every day, you've got to think independently. You've got to look at those that have created the results and can attract abundance in their life repeatedly over and over and over again, which happens to me a small percentage of the population. What are they doing? How are they transacting? What are the kind of information that they're consuming? How do they see reality? What you'll find is they're visionaries, okay? They focus on their vision. Imagination is your most powerful faculty. Imagine what a lovely and good report. No, imagine what is lovely and of good report. report. You are what you imagine yourself to be. Now, wealth is one of those important areas that we want to discuss because it is something that we aspire because by having wealth in your life, you are able to take care of yourself, take care of your family, be able to travel, create free time for yourself. It's very important. And wealth is a consciousness, success consciousness, wealth consciousness. So we want to program our subconscious mind for wealth consciousness. Decide to be wealthy. It's easy with the infallible aid of your subconscious mind. Focus on your vision, have exact clarity as to what your vision is, become clear and learn things like the Diltz, Robert Diltz model, which I talk about in my training program, on how to program your subconscious mind and have everything in alignment and so that you are supporting all the elements of your vision and your goal. And your subconscious mind is experiencing the environment. So all throughout the day, you're being supported by information that's moving you towards your goal, which is towards the goal of wealth, and you'll be able to create it easier and easier. The feeling of wealth produces wealth. Keep this in the mind at all times. Don't look at scarcity and entertain scarcity. Don't feel that you can't do things. When you're around scarcity, talk and people in the beginning, make a conscious decision not to be around there unless you can sway the conversation to one of abundance. Your conscious and subconscious mind must agree. Your subconscious accepts what you really feel to be true. The dominant idea is always accepted by your subconscious. Dominant idea should be wealth, not poverty. Affirmations. See how money is the root of all the good that can be brought into your life that will change how you are living right now to a place of happiness, joy, and abundance. Look at how money can help you 
serve others, create more value in their life. For those that have not been taught these philosophies, that have been ingrained with money being evil, carry the seeds of money being evil and negative in their mind, and they might consciously say, okay, I want to create wealth in my life, or I want to buy the house, or I want to make 200000 a year, but there's conflicting programming in the subconscious mind that prevents them from doing it. When what you consciously affirm, you must not mentally deny a few months later. This will neutralize the good you have affirmed. So when it comes to programming your subconscious mind, you got to create your affirmations, you got to create your vision, and you got to repeat the affirmation, and you got to cultivate the vision, you got to visualize, you've got to emotionalize, and you got to make sure that all the information within your awareness is supporting that vision. If you are consuming information, or you are talking, or you are dealing with information, that is contrary to that, you are neutralizing the effects and you're going to find that you're going to end up confused. You're going to be moving away from your results. I meet people that are on the track, they're, they're moving forward, they're doing the visualizations, they're consuming the empowering information, and all of a sudden they, they derail themselves, probably because of the subconscious or something they put conscious emphasis on. And then what happens is they start consuming negative information that's contrary and then they go off track. And then they have to get themselves back on track. You got to stay on track with this stuff. Okay, this stuff's important if you believe it's important. If you don't believe it's important, then it'll always be an ebb and flow in a space of, okay, I see abundance and now I see scarcity and I see abundance. You can direct your mind towards staying in abundance by being aware of what you are being distracted by and choose the elements that relate towards abundance. Understand that your environment plays a huge role and consciously place yourself in situations, circumstance with people and surround yourself with information that contributes towards wealth. There's a reason why I do read these books every week and do these discussions. Because for a handful of hours every week, I am submerged in empowering information. It is programming my subconscious mind and multiplying my success. There's a reason why I choose business consulting and coaching and different kinds of things that I do on top of the other businesses that I run because these things affirm these concepts in me. It affirms them and further builds upon the foundations that I had laid and it continues to multiply my ability to stay focused on the wealth, on the success and the things that I'm interested in. Remember, envy and jealous are stum jealousy are stumbling blocks to the flow of wealth. Rejoice in the prosperity of others. How you believe reality to work is a reflection of yourself. So if you're angry at others and you're not happy for others, you're actually not happy with yourself. And so it's important to become happy with yourself when you're generating wealth. Be happy and encouraging of those that were able to be successful. Learn and study them. If not, you're in denial and you're creating negative programming, which is going to cause a lot of issues. So if you are affirming how you want wealth and then you're acting out envy and jealousy and hatred towards others for having it, you're creating a lot of negativity and emotional turmoil and stress within yourself. The block to wealth is your own mind. Destroy that block now by getting on good mental terms with everyone. Okay, Getting on good mental terms with everyone. See reality as it's contributing to your goals. See everybody as people contributing towards your goals. They're teaching you about yourself by telling you and you observe how you respond to what they say. They reveal to you where you get distracted and not distracted. They reveal to you where you polarize yourself, for example, react to something, whether you really believe in something or not. If you have faith that you will create the success that you want in your life, and somebody comes up in your awareness and starts talking about how you can't create the result, do you get reactive to that and start having doubt within yourself? Well, if it does, you don't blame the person. What you say is, okay, I realize within myself that I haven't enforced or I haven't cultivated as much faith in what I'm doing. Because when you have a certain level of faith, nobody can come into your awareness and tell you otherwise when it comes to these concepts. And I know this and I speak from experience for myself. Right now, there are certain things about my reality when it comes to wealth uh, consciousness that are absolute and cannot be changed. And if someone tries to come up to me and explains to me another way that is disempowering and negative and leads to, I will accept them. I won't reject them because what you resist persists. I will understand that their perspective is 
true from their reality. It works for them in their reality, whether they're conscious of it or not, of the end result. And I choose to believe what I want to believe because I know the results that are generated from it. It's not from a place of anger and hatred and pushing away, but from a place of acceptance. And you'll learn more about this when you study the books Letting Go and Power Versus Force by David Hawkins when he talks about levels of consciousness. The higher state of consciousness is acceptance. What you resist persists. You can accept somebody else on how they see reality and understand their perspective while still having your own perspective that could be contrarian. Stop trying to get something for nothing. There's no such thing as a free lunch. You must give to receive. You must give mental attention to your goals, ideas, and enterprises, and your deeper mind will back you up. The key to wealth is application of the laws of the subconscious mind by impregnating it with the idea of wealth. Study wealth, understand the different psychology pieces of wealth, read The Science of Getting Rich, or any kind of books when it comes to psychology of wealth, and you will realize that it is a consciousness. And then when you've acquired that consciousness and you affirm that consciousness, and you make sure that your environment supports that consciousness, your behaviors will start to change. You'll start to do things differently. You might even become really passionate about selling. Selling is the world's highest paid profession. As an entrepreneur, you gotta be good at sales. See, the reason why my IT business grew and it kept growing really fast and everything I do grows really fast as far as business is because I can sell. I know how to market and I love doing it. Whereas back in the days, I never liked doing it. The reason why I like doing it is because I realized that by putting myself in the position to be in front of a prospect, I have the opportunity and they have the opportunity to receive a product and I have the opportunity to make some money for the product or service that I've created that can benefit their lives. If I don't show up in front of them, they won't have that benefit. So I'm eager and excited to go up to them and make the offer with passion, not with force, because it's obvious that it's good for them. I'm looking for the right prospects. And once you understand how this stuff works, you get excited about selling because look, it's a service to sell products and service to people that can benefit from it. It's a disservice. It's actually being like treating people disrespectfully if you don't make an offer to them knowing that they can get benefit from that. Yes, they're going to pay you for it because it's value for value. It's fair exchange. You took the time to create the product or service. It's valuable. It can change their results. So that's why it's very important to always sell things that you believe in. It don't, this won't work if you've got cognitive dissonance and you're trying to pretend like you care about what you're selling in front of the person. You have got to have congruence. Okay? Mentally, emotionally, and physically, you've got to be in alignment. Pick products and services that you're excited about, that you're passionate about, and get excited about the results that your clients are going to have as a result of buying your product or service, the joy it brings. Okay? Think about that and know it to be true. See, value is what's valuable to the other person. You can't force value. This is why the process of learning how to sell in market is so exciting because you'll learn the very important concept of WIIFM, what's in it for me. And that's what your prospect and your client is saying, is saying. And when you understand that, that's a good thing because if you give them what's in it for them, they'll pay you for it because they're going to get the results and they got to understand how it contributes to the results and you're going to get excited about communicating. So that's, you see, all these things I had learned in my journey as a result of programming my subconscious mind. I never used to think this before. I was afraid of selling before. I used to tell people that, okay, I got to do the selling thing. And, you know, it's, it's almost like you're, you're preparing yourself to go to war or something like this. Now it's like I'm excited about it. I look forward to it. It's one of my favorite things to do in business. And it is the world's highest paid profession and the highest thing an entrepreneur can do. Because even if you're not selling a product or service, you're still doing deals. Everything is selling. You're always selling all the time. So it's important to accept it, understand it, and get good of it and get good at it because it doesn't come from a slimy place unless you are slimy within. One reason why many people simply make ends meet and never get enough money is that they, keep, they condemn money. Okay, So what you condemn takes wings and fly away. You can't say, I want to create all this wealth and success and then have a hatred towards creating value for people and receiving money. If you don't want to receive money, it means you have low self-esteem and low self-respect, which means that you can work on that. You can build your self-respect. You can understand how receiving money is actually a sign of self-respect because you need the money to survive. You need it to thrive. You need it to improve your life. Happiness. Giving thanks for all your blessings several times a day. Furthermore, pray for the peace and happiness and prosperity for all members of your family, associates, and all people everywhere. 
Okay, pray for the happiness and prosperity for all members of your family, your associates, and all people everywhere. What you put out as far as energy and your desire to see well-being in the world comes back to you. Remember we talked about this earlier. Do you see the world as a friendly place? You must sincerely desire to be happy. Nothing is accomplished without desire. Desire is a wish and with wings of imagination and faith. Imagine the fulfillment of your desire and feel its reality and it will come to pass. Happiness comes in answered prayer. So be happy for yourself. Have gratitude. Practice gratitude in all things. Have the gratitude right now that you have the opportunity to listen to this information, that this kind of books and knowledge exists today to help you. Someone actually went out there and created and put this together for you to be happy, for you to realize that the key to your happiness is within yourself. Be happy and grateful for absolutely everybody in your life and everything in your environment from this day forth because it is all teaching you about yourself. And it is you. Your external world is a reflection of yourself within. If you have hatred to anything or anyone in your external world, if you can't understand their perspective and at least be in a place of acceptance, then you have anger and hatred towards yourself, and that is going into your subconscious mind and creating more of it. It doesn't mean you have to agree with people. You just have to realize that there's far more that you can do to create good in the world and multiply good in the world when you focus on what you can do and your ability to do it and that your subconscious mind is going to generate the way to be able to do it. And this comes from a place of acceptance of yourself and acceptance with others. Dealing with others. You attract the right mate by dwelling on the qualities and characteristics you admire in a woman or man and then your subconscious mind will bring you together in divine order. Where you put your attention, that's where your energy flows. Energy flows where your attention goes. And so when you put emphasis on what you like about people, you'll start to notice more and more of that showing up in your reality. When you meet people, whether it's a dating context, friendship context, business relationship context, and you're focusing on the things that you don't like about them, you're further imprinting it into your subconscious mind, and you're going to attract more and more of that. I know this because I have some friends who talk about how they have these relationships that they keep creating in their life or their dating life is pretty much the same and they're attracting all these people that they don't like and it's always ending up in the same way. And the reason why is that there is some programming in their subconscious mind that comes from a place where they felt disempowered, where what the meaning of a relationship is to them is really based on this programming that's in the subconscious mind. Now, they might consciously say that that's not what they want, but subconsciously they've had experiences in the past that associate those negative behaviors in a partner with relationship. And so they play out when they say they're looking for a relationship those same kind of scenarios to attract the same people and partake in that theater type of experience with the other person. And then they end up getting frustrated because consciously it's not what they're looking for. Consciously it's not healthy for them. So what we have to do is we have to go back and make peace with these areas of our lives and understand that the meaning that we had associated during that time, which was a disempowering meaning, was not because we were trying to be hard on ourselves or we don't need to shame ourselves. In fact, we need to forgive ourselves and realize that we did the best that we could. However, now we consciously choose to desire to connect with people who have certain characteristics and criteria. That of a fulfilling and uplifting and enriching relationship that is mutually beneficial and that is growing each other towards a higher purpose. And then look for the characteristics that make up this person and create a list of those characteristics and admire those characteristics in people when you meet them. And that will, what that'll do is it'll get your subconscious mind to associate those characteristics towards the kind of people that you want to be around and you'll find yourself being more aware of attracting those kind of people in your life and appreciating them, number one. You'll be more aware when they're in your environment and you'll connect with them. And also your subconscious mind will go to work and you'll get all these ideas, hunches and inspirations to do things which will end you, which will have you end up connecting with people like that. This is all a result of having clarity of a vision, specific list, visualizing and emotionalizing and being very passionate about it as well as letting go from your past from a place of forgiveness because what you resist persists. So if you shame yourself or you have hatred towards characteristics 
of the people that show up in your reality, then what you're really doing is further emphasizing those in the subconscious mind. Do not wonder how, why, or where you will meet the mate you are praying for. Trust implicitly the wisdom of your subconscious mind. It has the know-how, and you don't have to assist it. So we mentioned this. Your subconscious mind has far more data than you can imagine. And all this data and all these experiences and all these different understandings of how reality works has been recorded for the many years of your life. So we have to trust the repository of information that we have by first getting clear on what it is that we want, keep our focus on the vision and mix it with joy, ease, bliss, happiness, and faith. Trust that it's going to happen because the trusting and the faith that it's going to happen affirms it to the subconscious mind to make it happen. And then notice as your behaviors start to change, you'll have interests that will go in different directions than before because the programming is changing. And then support that empowering information by choosing to be in, in environments and conversations with people, consuming information and so forth, that further builds upon that programming that you're instilling in your subconscious mind. You'll notice your confidence goes up, you'll notice you'll have greater clarity, you'll get greater insights, and you'll be orienting yourself in the direction that will be favorable for you, which is now based on conscious programming that you're putting into the subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is a recording machine which repro reproduces your habitual thinking. Think good of the other and you are actually thinking good about yourself. Your external world is a reflection of your internal world. How you treat others is a reflection of how you treat yourself. And one of the most important ways of programming the subconscious mind towards positivity is to think good and to think highly of others. Because to think good and highly of others is to actually think good of yourself. When you give compliments to somebody and you appreciate them and you talk highly about them, you're actually affirming this in yourself. When you connect with people and they have a hard time being nice to other people or giving compliments and not abundant with positivity in their language, it's an indicator that they don't have a high degree of self-love and self-respect. And if you're doing this, then that's an indicator as well. And you can change this around by actually going first and being kind and respectful to people. Practicing this and actually saying the words affirms it to yourself. Remember, your subconscious mind doesn't know about the difference between this person and that person. It only accepts the information that it gets as fact. And then it has a double effect by proactively being nice to other people. You're being good to the external world. By being respectful to other people, you're being good to the external world, which is a reflection of your inner world. And then your inner world will start to change. The very exercise of doing this is very important, very, very important. It's not just about affirming to yourself how you're a great person and being kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others to further emphasize the programming of positivity in your subconscious mind. A hateful or resentful thought is a mental poison. Do not think ill of another, for to do so is to think ill of yourself. You are the only thinker in your universe, and your thoughts are creative. You create your reality based on your thoughts. If you think negative towards another person, doesn't matter who it is, you are thinking negative in your own mind and you are affirming that in your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind only knows negativity. You might think that it's, oh, it's about this other person that you're associating negative to and it's outside of you, but you're thinking negativity. Negativity and resentment is within you. It's generating from within you and it's affirming itself in your subconscious mind and it's going to bring more about it in your reality. You're going to notice it more. And you're going to notice yourself being a, a effect of resentment and hatefulness and so forth. To cheat, rob, and defraud another brings lack, loss, and limitation to yourself. Your subconscious mind records your inner motivations, thoughts, and feelings. These being of a negative nature, loss, limitation, and trouble come to you in countless ways. Actually, what you do to the other, you are doing to yourself. So in dealing with others, this is why the golden age-old rule of be kind to others. Do unto others as you wish them do unto you. Treat others with respect. It's not just about the people. It's about yourself. When you treat others that way, you're treating yourself that way. When you're trustworthy to, to others, when you're loving of others, when you're kind and respectful to others, 
you're doing it to yourself as well. And if it's success that you're looking to achieve, then most likely you're going to be dealing with others. There's always better ways of choosing words that is inspiring and uplifting to the external, which again, inspires and uplifts you. Choices of words are very important. People are paying close attention to how you communicate because it's revealing to you about yourself. If you talk negatively about other people, it means you think negatively of yourself and you have negative thoughts and they're not going to trust you. It's important to practice communicating in a way that's uplifting and inspiring. And that's why it's good to always review the information we've discussed in power versus force. In higher states of consciousness, power exists, but it's not from a place of mental, emotional, and physical force, which is lower states of consciousness. When we are looking to grow and evolve and create abundance in our life, we have to do it from a place of higher states of consciousness. So our words and what we think of another person need to come from a place of higher states of consciousness. Emotionally, becoming emotionally mature and permit others to differ from you. It's okay that others have different opinions. They're right from their perspective in their reality. The key is acceptance because when you accept others, you accept yourself. What you resist persists. If you keep pushing up against something, it will surface. And if you try to hide it, you are regressing it. You are pushing it down. And it will come to the surface because that's just being in denial. Denial is expressed in the body by anxiety, physical pain, and so forth. Now, the key here is to be free and expressive. So authentically, we got to come from a place of accepting people authentically, saying they have different opinions and that's okay. I might not necessarily agree with their opinion and they might even be destructive with their opinion, but from this place, I'm going to do something about it based on positivity and you'll be more likely to move the objective forward. If you encounter situations like this in the business world, when you're dealing with people and then there's some hostility because they think a certain way and they're being hostile towards you, let them be. You can move in a different direction and you can produce the result and you can evolve the business without having to deal with them. Remember, they have a right to disagree with you and you as well have the same freedom to disagree with them. You can disagree without being disagreeable because if you start to get into a battle and argue with them, again, the external world is a reflection of the internal world. You're just arguing with yourself. Your inner speech representing your silent thoughts and feelings is experienced in the reactions of others towards you. So when you're in front of people and you're communicating with them, you can actually see what you are projecting in them. If you feel discomfort and anger and hatred in, within them, or you experience that through them, or you're seeing that on them, you are actually feeling it within yourself. So it's important to radiate love, peace, and good to will to each other. These vibrations are picked up by the subconscious mind, resulting in mutual trust, affection, and respect, not just in your subconscious mind, but their subconscious mind. Now, if you don't live in a place where this is your norm and you have a high state of consciousness, when I say place, I'm not talking about a specific, specific geographical location. I'm talking about where you are. If this is not the normal way of living, then it's going to take some work to evolve yourself to a place where you do live like this. And that's a beautiful thing. See, because we have so much opportunity to create better harmonious relationships with ourselves and others. And so we can start to look at and realize that a lot of the experiences that we have that get us to treat somebody else from a disempowering perspective, when we're disagreeing with them and angry and hatred towards them in the disagreement, comes from past experiences. Maybe you've seen your parents do it. Maybe you've seen certain people in your environment do it and you thought that was the only way. Perhaps in that particular consciousness, that was the only way, but there is a better way. And if you want to create results and success in your life, then you're going to have to do things that is in alignment with abundance and prosperity. And thinking from a disempowering place is not in alignment with abundance and prosperity because it's actually from a place of scarcity and limitation. So when it comes to dealing with others, deal abundantly in radiating love, peace, and goodwill. Think highly of the other person. You know, there's an old saying, if you ain't got nothing nice to say about something or somebody, don't say it at all. There's a lot of truth to that. Look for positive ways of reframing that so that you can uplift the person. This might seem difficult in the beginning if you're not used to it, 
but it's worth it and you'll start to embrace this way of being and the external world will be very harmonious towards you kind to you and respectful to you because you are in fact being kind and respectful to yourself by choosing your words never yield to emotional scenes and tantrums of others appeasement never wins do not be a doormat adhere to what is right stick to your ideal knowing that the mental outlook which gives you peace happiness and joy is right good and true what blesses you blesses all See, now that we're more conscious and aware of how the information goes into our subconscious mind and programs our reality, we can choose to attach belief and meaning to whatever we experience in the external world and our dealings with others. And so what we do is we choose to adopt an empowering meaning, an empowering meaning towards ourselves where we say, well, this person might feel that way about the situation, but I choose not to have that same belief. I'm going to pick this other belief, which is empowering to me. And... I understand them, I accept them, that in their reality they see it's right. And they're choosing to, to be this way, and they wish to not have a discussion about it, and to me that's okay. So if you look at it from that perspective, you're doing it with a place of peace and acceptance, plus you are affirming to yourself the positive, reinforcing ideologies and beliefs that will move you towards your goal and objective and bring about more happiness in your life, and also be able to share those happy experiences and so forth with other people. You cannot be hurt by criticism when you know that you are the master of your thoughts, reactions, and emotions. This gives you the opportunity to pray and bless the other, thereby blessing yourself. So criticism or any kind of experience that you get from another person, like rejection or whatnot, back in the days, you might have just associated the meaning of lower self-esteem or lower self-worth or blow to your ego, whatever. Now, when you have these experiences show up, these criticisms or rejections, you can remove yourself from the situation real time and give an empowering meaning. And with practice, you can develop this to be automatic. So when someone rejects you in sales, for example, you'll look at it as optimization data. Maybe it's not the right message. Maybe it's not the right time for them. Maybe they're not the right prospect. Or maybe your offer is not really valuable to them. And even if they reject you, reject you harshly, it doesn't really matter. Because if they're going to be harsh, it's really them being harsh with themselves. Some people will criticize you and they'll throw in all this negativity in the criticism. The criticism and the negativity is just how they see reality. And if they're throwing all this negativity in it, it's really them being that way to themselves. You don't have to associate with that negativity. You could take the constructivism or the constructive pieces of the criticism and adopt it and use it to evolve whatever you're doing without getting reactive to the negativity. Because if you get reactive to the negativity, you are affirming it in your subconscious mind. Mental blocks. The solution lies within the problem. The answer is in every question. Infinite intelligence responds to you as you call upon it with faith and confidence. To look at life from an empowering perspective means that you evaluate your thoughts about a given scenario and ask yourself, is this the best way to go about looking at the current circumstance or situation? One of the things that occurs on our journey, let's say towards entrepreneurship, is we encounter obstacles or problems. And in the personal development movement, we are taught to look at these problems as opportunities, to look at these situations that might appear negative as opportunities. And that is the truth. Because when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at start to change. And you actually go and look for solutions. If you see it as a problem and something that can't be overcome or it can't be realized into a potential opportunity for a solution, or you just think it's going to be really difficult and you reinforce that in the subconscious mind, you will play it out accordingly. One of the things you learn in the journey is that when problems show up, you actually get excited. You get excited about the problem. Why? Because then you can use your creativity to come up with a solution. And you actually get excited about looking for the solution. And then you start to tap into all these possible ways of saluting, uh, sol having the solution for the problem, and you actually solve the problem. This is a perspective shift. So one person looks at a problem as something that sets them back. They feel emotional negativity towards it, stress. Another person gets excited. The one that gets excited all of a sudden starts to stimulate parts in their brain to get access for the solution to the problem. 
Habit is the function of your subconscious mind. There is no greater evidence in the marvelous power of your subconscious than the force and sway habits hold in your life. You are a creature of habit. So you are a creature of habit, and your habits have been consciously programmed. Maybe you do certain things by routine and you consciously program it until you become subconscious, and then you can't imagine your life without the routine. Or we experience certain kinds of disempowering situations in our lives, negative experiences, and these form negative habits. Or we experience some positive scenarios in our life and mixed in it is some negative experiences and side effects and we continue to get joy from doing the thing while experiencing that negativity and with repetition it becomes habit until we no longer feel that positivity from that particular thing and we only experience the negativity such as smoking or doing anything that damages the body eating junk food and so forth so knowing that these habits that are formed can be changed is very important First of all, you have to believe that it's possible that you can change it. And second of all, you can program your subconscious mind to incorporate positive habits. See, by changing your self-worth over to one of self-love and self-respect, you will start to notice that you no longer desire to do destructive things to yourself. And then all of a sudden, you'll evaluate the destructive things you're doing. You'll bring awareness on it. And you'll actually be motivated to remove those destructive behaviors. Especially when you raise up your consciousness to the higher levels of consciousness, when you are from a place of acceptance, love, peace, and joy within yourself and others. You now start to value yourself more. You value your life more. And you're more likely to look for replacing negative habits with positive habits. And then with repetition, you start to enforce those positive habits and your life begins to change. But remember this, any kind of negative habit that you have, it's important to not shame yourself and realize that, look, everybody goes through this. So how can we change those negative habits into positive habits? Well, I did a discussion on Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. I recommend watching that. But one of the first things that we do is we affirm, we create affirmations, and we have a burning desire by repeat affirmations and consuming supporting information towards that affirmation of actually being able to overcome that negative habit by replacing it with something else. So you can say something like, I'm so happy and grateful that I choose to exercise as a healthy alternative for any kind of habit that no longer serves me that comes up. I'm so happy that I always choose healthy, delicious, nutritious food that makes me feel good and satisfies me and makes me feel great after eating it and contributes to me feeling healthy, looking great, and being very vibrant with my energy, and affirming that over and over again. In the starting, it might be hard to believe that, but at, with repetition and visualization and emotionalization, as discussed, your subconscious mind will accept that as fact, and then you'll notice your habits start to change. The things you do in your environment will be different. You'll be more interested in other things, and more and more things will come to support you within your awareness as a result of this programming that is drawing it within your awareness from within. You form habit patterns in your subconscious mind by repeating a thought and act over and over again until it establishes track in the subconscious mind and becomes automatic, such as swimming, dancing, typing, walking, driving your car, etc. See, we already know how to consciously program our subconscious mind when we learn activities like this. And we can do it again and again and again. And all we have to do is start with the belief that we can, repeat the thought and create the burning desire around the thought, get excited about it, and then you'll choose to participate in these uplifting habits. And then the repetition of doing these uplifting habits will turn it into something that is second nature. Whatever mental picture backed by faith you behold in your conscious mind and your subconscious mind will bring it to pass. You behold in your conscious mind, your subconscious mind will bring to pass. So take the mental picture of the vision that you desire, keep it in your mind, affirm it to yourself, the affirmations that are related to that visual image with repetition, each time feeling the excitement of that visualization, building up the excitement, and do this repeatedly, 15 minutes a day in the morning, 15 minutes a day at night, or 30 minutes during the day, whatever you want to do it, whatever works best for you. 
I personally like doing it for 30 minutes a day at some point of the day. And I read affirmations in the morning, but not necessarily on repeat for 15 minutes. But the bottom line is this. I notice myself orienting towards the elements in the affirmation. I have a desire to do the things in the affirmation. I have no desire to do things that are contrary to that. And then when I support that information with other empowering information in my environment, music, people, circumstances, videos, audios, books that support my vision, I get even more insights and perspectives and more behavioral changes that are in alignment and I produce the result. The only obstacle to your success and achievement is your own thought or mental image. Your own thought or mental image. We've got to look at our thoughts that we're having, the way we experience the environment, the way we experience ourselves, the different kinds of things that we think about throughout the day, and note any of the disempowering thoughts, ideas, philosophies, values that we have. Write them down that are not in alignment with our goal. And those are the areas that we need to go to work on. When we change those within, the external world changes. Those thoughts are obstacles, and they're not real. They're just in our mind. We created them. We created them sometimes consciously, but a lot of times through experiences in our past, and we didn't know how to work with the stuff, where we just accepted negative meaning, disempowering meaning, and accepted it as fact. And as a result, we have all these disempowering beliefs that now limit us, that prevent us from rising up to higher levels of success. Taking inventory of these negative beliefs are very important. Because when you take inventory of these negative beliefs, you can write positive affirmations. And you can go through the process that I outlined in my program, which creating the audio, which I believe works really well, and I use it every day, and rewrite these negative beliefs. I find more and more of these, the more aware I am, and they come from many years of disempowering programming. And you don't have to erase all of them. This is a fun journey you can go on. It's a continuum. But the more you are able to remove, the more success you're able to create in your life, and the easier it is for you to create success in whatever area of your choice. It's the limiting beliefs that prevent you from achieving this success, and you can have the opportunity using the process we talk about to identify these negative beliefs and rewrite them to positive ones, just as you had acquired them in your initial discovery of the negative beliefs through experiences in your life. You're doing it consciously this time. And then your behaviors change. I'm looking at how far I've come since I first learning, started learning this stuff and how much I have accelerated over the last few months when I've made even more of a conscious effort. And then I realize that I have even more opportunity every day. Every day I wake up with more evolved perspectives as a result of the programming that I've been doing on my subconscious mind. Every day I'm noticing my behaviors are a lot more effective and efficient, congruent towards the next level goals that I'm creating. And I also notice every day I'm finding more and more disempowering ideas and beliefs within myself, ones that weren't apparent before but are now apparent now that I've raised my level of awareness. When your attention wanders, bring it back to the contemplation of your goal or the good of your vision. Make a habit. This is called disciplining the mind. When you bring your vision back or when you bring your mind back to your vision and what you want to create, you are firming it in your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind is going to automatically get you to do the other things that are necessary to produce that result. You'll have drives, desires, and inspirations show up. You'll be motivated to go in a certain direction versus another direction. Anytime you feel that you are going off course or you feel disempowered or negativity, Start focusing on your vision and goal, on your affirmations, and notice how it changes, provided you do it with the proper process outlined. You don't want to just say them out loud robotically. You want to visualize and emotionalize and feel our emotions building up. Your conscious mind is the camera, and your subconscious mind is the sensitive plate on which you register or imp impress the picture. So remember that. We impress the image, and we emotionalize it with a burning desire, as discussed in Think and Grow Rich, Onto our subconscious mind. By the way, this is a secret that Napoleon Hill was talking about in Thinking Grow Rich. Have a vision in your mind. Impress it upon the subconscious mind. You'll draw about hunches and inspirations. You'll connect with infinite intelligence, and you'll be able to draw out the actions to create the results. Fear. 
Do the thing you are afraid to do and the death of fear is certain. Say to yourself and mean it, I'm going to master this fear and you will. When you encounter any fears in your life, we have to ask ourselves, is this a valid fear? Some fears are valid. There's healthy fears. For example, there's fears that are designed to protect you. It's good to have a healthy fear when you are, for example, doing some rock climbing or you are doing anything that potentially poses a risk to your well-being. If you have a little fear over there, then, then that's all right. However, if the fear is crippling in a situation where it's not warranted, such as selling or other kinds of situations, then we have to, with repetition, rewrite the programming and orient ourselves to do the thing over and over again till we subconsciously realize that the fear was not valid. Now, in Thinking Grow Rich, and if you haven't watched the video I did, we talked about the various fears that he covers in there. I did a lengthy, almost three-hour video on Thinking Grow Rich. It's important to take inventory of those fears and see where they show up in your life. They show up a large part due to subconscious programming that we have internally. Some of the stuff comes wired from our birth in our neurology, and a whole bunch of it comes from different experiences in our lives where we associated negative meaning and thus give this fear more power. We have to rewrite it with affirmations and we have to take action. So we talk about faith. Faith is when the mental image, the emotions, and the physical action are in alignment. So acting in faith helps us overcome fear. We've got the mental image, we get excited about it, and we move forward. If you are afraid of closed places such as elevators, lecture halls, mentally ride in an elevator, blessing all parts and its functions, you'll be amazed how quickly the fear will be dissipated. You can run through scenarios in your mind and you can understand whether you see it as an empowering outcome or a disempowering outcome. If you think of a sales presentation you're, you're going to do and you imagine it to be successful and you run it through your mind a handful of times, you'll notice that you'll be a lot more proficient in that sales experience, sales presentation. If you run it in your mind and you start to see negativity or people not accepting you, feel yourself as you'll notice that you'll entertain that fear more and then when you show up to that event whatever it is you're going to do you won't be able to operate as effectively now if you run yourself through a scenario in the mind in whatever situation that leads to rejection and you notice yourself doing it that way where you feel the rejection and you actually see the person rejecting you you can consciously run that scenario again and again from an empowering perspective and rewrite all the story to the person accepting you and you can do this 5, 10, 15 times until you start to accept with faith that it's going to be that way. And what you notice is that your behaviors will be different. Think of this in scenarios in your life where you were going to do something and it was fearful and then you actually visualized yourself before doing it, actually doing it to success. And then notice how your physiology changed. You actually went and did the thing towards success. That right there is the power of your subconscious mind overcoming fears. So we can use this as tools. Nothing can disturb you but your own thought. The suggestions, statements, or threats of another person have no power. See, nothing, none of these things have meaning unless we give it meaning. If we give it disempowering meaning, then it has power over us. The power is within you. You give it the meaning. You choose to give it the meaning. You can practice from this day forth consciously choosing to give meaning to different things that happen to you. You might not have done this before. But now make a commitment to yourself that you're going to do this because this can be a huge pivotal point for you and it can change the entire scope or level of success, creation, ability that you have for the rest of your life. The power is within you and when your thoughts are focused on that, which is good, then God's power is with you through thought, thoughts of good. There is only one creative power and it moves as harmony. There are no divisions or quarrels in it. It sources love. It is why God's power is with your thoughts of good. Youthfulness. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, what about age? How does it impact this and impact that? Those are all just stories. The truth is this. There are many people out there who are a lot older than you that are achieving a lot more success, that have a lot more energy that have a lot more of whatever and are doing whatever you believe 
that you can't do. And the key is to look for those people and actually see how it is so, and to realize that age has very little control over you. You have far more ability within you that you have not tapped into yet, and you can work with this ability to create whatever results you want. The moment you start thinking about age, and this was one of the fears that Napoleon Hill talked about in Think and Grow Rich, fear of old age, you start to cripple yourself and diminish what you can do. You start to limit yourself. Welcome the advancing years. It means you're moving higher on the life path, which has no end. And you acquire more wisdom by being alive longer, provided that you are consciously living. So you'll find even more creative solutions to achieve the result five years from now, ten years from now, if you keep continuing down this path. You are as young as you think you are. You are as strong as you think you are. You are as useful as you think you are. And you are as young as your thoughts. Thus, it's important to re-evaluate our thoughts, reflect back as to where they come from, realize that we can change our thoughts. We have the power to program our subconscious mind. And after going through this process of working with the subconscious mind for many years and really amping it up with my coaching and consulting and creating the program, I started to realize that I have even more capability to work with this because I've been doing this with myself. And every day I wake up even more excited knowing that I can change programming values and beliefs within myself that were instilled within me, either consciously or subconsciously through experiences, listening to other people and so forth, towards one that is of empowerment and towards higher vision. And this keeps going and going. If you want a copy of the mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.